Hi, I'm Evan Lewis, and uh, I'd like to welcome you back to my YouTube channel, which is Evan E. Scent. And some of you may have seen it before, about uh, using mainly about the, using the Boxford lathe. And previously, I've made offsets that you screw onto the front of the chuck to allow you to line up and machine uh, thin objects and re in a reproducible manner, mount them repeatedly on the chuck with good alignment. Uh, I went to use it recently on a fairly small object and it didn't work because the offsets were too far away from the center of the chuck, further away than the, than the edge of the piece of work I was wanting to mount. So I had to make an adaption uh, and that's what this video is about. It should be quite a short one. Just to recap a little, let's go back and have a look at what we did previously. We made these offsets that are mounted on the chuck and they allow you to place a large disc here. Uh, and line it up perfectly every time. But this is an 80 millimeter diameter piece of brass uh, that this was made from. Uh, that was made for making cams for the stamper battery, which we'll come back to later. Uh, but uh, the next project actually was to make smaller coins from bronze, and they were too small to fit on these offsets. So I started off with this piece of quarter inch or five millimeter thick um, aluminium scrap and uh, I just cut this piece out of it and I'm going to be cutting along this line to here and this line to there that'll make me one triangular piece and then if I cut down to here and across these two lines I'll have a triangle here, a triangle there and a triangle here so I'll have three triangles to put on the chuck My next door neighbour wanted to know if I had an electric hacksaw over here when he heard me going So, now I have three triangular pieces, and uh, they fit into the chuck, which I guess you'll see in a minute. But first I'm going to do a bit of a beautification project here. I'll start off with a really coarse file. Aluminium is really bad for clogging up files, and one trick is to put chalk in the file, which tends to prevent the metal from sticking in the grooves. See, it's already starting to get Pinned as they call it, pinning the file. Finish it with a fine file. It's already got some chalk in it. Okay, so the three plates uh, go on a three jaw chuck like this. One on each side. And they'll be able to carry a little post in here that'll allow us to set up thin out objects in the chuck up to that kind of diameter. Um, probably a couple of centimeters diameter, I guess. So I've got to screw these back on. I've already got the holes screwed in here to put um, the um, offset posts on, on here. So I've got to drill holes in the correct places and I wouldn't be surprised if each one of these is just slightly different. I guess I'm going to have a little bit of clearance in the holes anyway, but um, I think I'll label them one, two, three, uh, corresponding to the jaw numbers. This is jaw one, so it can go in there. And uh, I'm going to try a little trick they used to do for making gaskets in cars. We'll put a little bit of dark black grease over the hole. Just slightly overfill the hole. There, it's fairly clear where it is. I'm going to send a punch that. Yeah, I've got my set of uh, little offset posts I've made here of several different heights, and those are the screws that fit into those threads and the and the track. So I'll need to make a make a drill hole that's uh, slightly larger than that. It's not going to really matter very much if it's not exactly lined up perfectly either. 3.62, yeah, that's 4. I think I might make it 4.5. Let's 
slight burr on the back, not much. I could get out a counter sinking tool, but often I just get a drill and take off the burr. A big drill. And that's going to go there. Find a screw. Now I want to mount um, one of these posts in each corner there. Whoop, so I can get that <laughs> fell in the grease. So I um, want to get them as close as I can to the centre, but not get in the way of the jaws. Okay, there you go, one greasy post. So um, I'm just going to place the post on here and drill through it to get the a little bit so it'll sit there. It's got grease on it, now I'll drop it in this wharf. So I'm just going to drill through it and make it nice. So, got a little dimple on each one where I'm going to drill it through and tap it to fit these, screw these on. So they shouldn't be uh, four and a half millimeters, they should be the drill size for a four millimeter metric screw. Now I've numbered these, one, two, three, obviously, for the where, the where the jaw number is stamped on the side of the jaw, corresponding with that, and there's another number on the chuck itself. So now, because of the extra uh, five millimeters of the plate, uh, these particular uh, offsets are a little bit too high. So I'm going to completely remove the jaws from the chuck because we don't want it to be, we could actually turn it like this with the jaw sitting in here. That's considered dangerous because without any tension on the jaws, they can come flying out and hit you in the nose. Or whatever other body part you might have in line with it. So, let's see, we want to go to number one first? No, number three first. Yep. Number three fell in its wharf. That's lovely. Typical. And two next. And one. Okay. So now I can turn these down to a little bit lower. Um, I think I need to take about two millimeters off them. This is uh, four millimeters thick and that'll give me at least two millimeters grip on it. So we'll see how that goes. So let's set this to zero. Let's get a good wind first. Wind around good distance to zero. Good. And we'll bring it up to the edge. And then we'll, we can start cutting and take two millimeters off. And I'm going to be using the top slide here, so I use the bottom position on the selector lever. So this goes the opposite direction you'd expect. So if you're using the, the top slide, use the bottom position. If you're using the bottom, um, if you're using the bottom wheel, you have this in the top position, and the middle position is for the lead screw for thread cutting. So I've got this in the forward direction that way, bottom position for the top slide, should be ready to go. And I've got that locked and the depth set, there we go. Touch on.
yes that's nicely just skimmed off the surface and we'll go between the posts here and wind this back actually I should take a note of how far back I have to come out 1.5 on the on the dial approximately let's bring this in 1.2.3 make another cut 0.3 see how that goes it's quite deep actually for me anyway Maximum of three, div three divisions difference, which is 0.03 millimeters. Here are the center, varying by two, about two. So that's 0.02 millimeters. So I think that's fairly good. Good enough for this job. Okay. So it's already set on zero, it's still there. Lock it again. Bring it back to the zero mark. Um, and we should be good to go. Oh, uh, I've got to turn the lead screw on because I had it turned off just a second ago. Goldilocks, Christmas time, Christmas decorations. Yes, yeah, so I don't, I don't know whether you can see that, but it's a really shiny finish that I've got on there. This uh, aluminium bronze is really nice to work with, actually. So now I'm going to polish it with a bit of brasso. Metal polish. Glass has been used for the same purpose before, of course. Seeing as a reflection of all the swarf on the underneath the lathe. I don't think you'd believe this unless you saw it. Micrometers, micrometer, the micrometer says 2.50 millimeters thick. Spot on, eh? I don't have a spring, a spring balance or a, any kind of balance, so I just made one. Um, very in plastic bags this has got the two Australian coins that weigh half a, half a troy ounce each and I can put our new coin in this side and see if they balance. Ah. Looks like my calculations are pretty much spot on. This penny weighs two grams if I put it on that side it would weigh it down so it must be you know it's, it's almost perfectly horizontal the pinholes for these plastic bags are slightly below the center pinhole and that, that's why it balances like that. 
but it's quite sensitive. Um, two grams about a third of the way along. Two grams halfway along is about equivalent to one gram, and you can see how much difference it makes. So it's at least within one gram of being the desired weight, which is 31.1 grams of one troy ounce. So that worked perfectly with those measurements.